A recent trend on low to mid tier Roland modules is to remove some really useful connectivity features. Not every single newbie will use these features, but having expansion options outside of having to purchase a brand new module is always welcome. I'm going to show you how you can reclaim one of those missing functions a dedicated MIDI import on modules like the Roland TD-17, TD-25, TD-11 and TD-15. And I'm going to show you what kind of things you could use that for. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome back to the eDrum Workshop. I'm Luke and I hope you're having a great day. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want any other cool tips or tricks for your electronic drums or any reviews, news or other discussions. As you've just seen in that clip, I was playing my Roland TD-17 module with the Roland Digital Snare and the Roland Digital Ride and with no other trigger connections connected to the Roland TD-17. I was running it all entirely through a MIDI-in connection which is something that the Roland TD-17 and quite a few other drum modules don't have as a standard. Standard. It has a dedicated DIN MIDI out socket, but it doesn't have a dedicated MIDI in, it only has MIDI in over USB. However, if you have one of these, a Kenton USB MIDI host, you can take the computer out of the equation and allow other MIDI devices or modules to send MIDI information into your module. This isn't the only USB MIDI host out there, but I'll go into why I chose this particular one a bit later on. And I'm not going to go really heavily into how MIDI works on a drum module in this video. That would take a whole other video and a whole lot of time because there's a lot to say. But I'll try to keep all of the information in this video as simple and user friendly as possible and I'll get into exactly what you should be able to expect this device to be able to do or not to do. For this particular use you connect the module you want to receive MIDI with, so here that's a Roland TD-17, to the USB host's USB port using the same cable you would normally connect to a computer with and then you can connect another module or MIDI device to the MIDI in port on the Kenton USB MIDI host. When the module's turned on the blinking green LED become solidly lit so that you know it's working. And a quick note about your module compatibility. Your module needs to be class compliant, which Roland modules are, but I'm not 100% sure about all of the modules that accept USB over MIDI like the ATB85. The Roland modules have two different driver modes that handle the USB connections, generic and vendor. These two handle things differently. The generic is purely MIDI data from what I can tell, and this is the driver mode that your Roland module needs to be in for this USB host to work. Vendor is what allows you to hook up your module and also send both the audio and the MIDI data to a PC as an interface. This driver mode doesn't work with the USB MIDI host and I think that the reason for that is that it's also sending audio rather than purely MIDI. So you need to make sure that your Roland module is in the generic driver mode in order to make this work if you ever did want to use one. Since I don't have access to an AD5 module anymore I can't really confirm or deny whether you can do this with that module. And if you have another module that has USB over MIDI but doesn't have a MIDI import, you'll need to check that it is class compliant and that it works in the same kind of way, otherwise it might not be compatible with this device. You would know that it isn't working properly because the LED would continue to blink instead of becoming solid. That means that the connection isn't recognized. Okay, so this allows you to now have a MIDI import without having a computer hooked up to your module. But what's this useful for? Well, there's a few fun things that you can use this for, kind of depending on what other devices you have available to you and what your exact use case will be. For a start, this opens up modules like the TD-17 or the TD-25 to now become MIDI slave modules, something that wasn't previously possible without a dedicated MIDI in port. And this means that you can use another drum module or MIDI device to trigger the sounds that are inside a module like the Roland TD-17. And here's some ideas of where this might be useful. The first is making a more playable mini kit. If you own something like a Roland SPDSX, you might have tried using it as a mini kit before for things like practicing or for very small venues. But because the SPDSX only deals in single samples, it's not really very inspiring to play like this if you want slightly more experience 
expressive sounds. It's great for electronic sounds or samples where you don't really want much variation, but it's not really as good as a proper e kit. The SPDSX does have a MIDI output though, so that means that you can send its data to another module that has a MIDI in. And now maybe the other drum module that you already own might have access to MIDI in. And this means that now you have access to the full playability of your drum module sounds from the face pads on the SPDSX. Every zone on the Roland TD-17 has an assignable MIDI note number, which makes 24 at my count. So you've got the potential there for a kit with quite a small footprint, but a lot of different things to hit. And if you want something like full hi-hat control, you can just plug your hi-hat pedal into the drum module, and that will work with any hi-hat instrument that you assign. Then you could also add your kick drum pad to the setup, and maybe even a couple of cymbals if you want to keep the cymbal chokes. The second use case could be layering up the sounds with a module that doesn't support sample layering. Some older Roland modules are still very useful today, but sometimes you might want to be able to beef those sounds up. And there's a bunch of other ways you could do this, of course, you could get something like a Roland TM2, a TM6 Pro, or use a sampler. But if you happen to have something like a Roland TD17, 25, 11, or 15 alongside another older module, you can use this method to use them in tandem if you didn't already have that option available to you. And even modules like the Pearl Mimic Pro only allow for sample layering on the kick and snare drum. I did actually do a video a while ago about how you could also layer up different instruments, but it wasn't fully usable due to an issue with the hi-hats, and you can view that video up here if you want to. If you had one of these modules alongside a Pearl Mimic Pro, you could now also layer up things like the toms, the crashes or the auxiliary pads. You do need to mix the audio together in order for this to work, either with a small mixer or by using the mix import on one of the modules, but it does work really well. A third use for this could be using your module sounds along with MIDI loops. If you have a MIDI sequencer or something like a Roland Octopad, which allows you to record loops from the pads that you play, you can usually send that MIDI data out to another module to use that module sounds with that loop. Previously, you wouldn't have been able to do this due to the lack of the MIDI import, but now you can. It is a pretty limited use case, but if you do want this, then you can have it. And number four is the big one from the thumbnail and the intro of this video using the Roland digital pads on modules that you're not supposed to use them with. And although for me personally, it's been pretty awesome and this really does sound like it would be the big one, there are some pretty obvious and large limitations that kind of stops it from being useful for many other people other than my own niche use. First off, you can't just go and buy a Roland Digital Snare and one of these and then hook it up to your TD-17, unfortunately. The Roland Digital Pads are class compliant and you can actually use them with the USB MIDI host. I'm gonna do a future video showing you how you can use it alongside something like the Pearl Mimic Pro if you wanted to. However, this method will not work with a module that doesn't have a DIN MIDI in socket because you're already using the USB port on the USB MIDI host for connecting to your module. There's only one USB socket on it, so you can't connect the USB port from your module and the USB port from a digital pad to the same device. You can actually hook up your digital pads to a computer and then you could send the MIDI data from that out to your module, but this is starting to introduce a lot more steps and doesn't really make it very useful and I'm pretty sure there'd be quite a bit of latency there too. So the way that I've been using the digital pads with the TD-17 is by using the MIDI out from the TD-50. All of the triggers, both digital and analog, are going into the TD-50 and then I'm just sending the MIDI data out of that into the TD-17. So the TD-17 isn't handling the triggering of any of the pads the TD-50 is. The TD-17 doesn't have positional sensing or some of those other features, so you don't get all of the functionality out of the digital pad. Changing positions on the head doesn't affect the sound in any way. And you also don't get a distinction between a rim click or a rim shot.
On the TD50, I believe that's actually handled by the positional sensing. However, something that does work is getting the dedicated cross stick function by placing your hand on the head. This is because the cross stick has its own dedicated MIDI note number inside both modules. Despite the fact that the cross stick function on the TD-17 normally needs you to press the X stick button to choose between cross stick or rim shot, or have it set via velocity only. So that's pretty cool, and also the touch muting on the digital ride also works. And this is because that's handled by the TD50 or 27 itself, and then the MIDI control data for the cymbal choke is just sent out in the same way as a cymbal grab would be. But the biggest and most obvious downside of all of this is that you need a TD50 or TD27 module in order for this to work. And if you have those, why would you need this? You probably won't, and neither will most people. Personally, it's great for me while I'm building kits because it means I can swap between the two kits without having to disconnect all of the triggers. I don't need to swap between individual trigger cables and a cable snake, which actually saves me quite a lot of time. And the added bonus is that I can use the hot spotless digital snare and the big old digital ride alongside the module, but I can't really think of much use for this function other than that exact use case. You would need both modules in order for this to work, and most people don't need two modules. And even if you did have another module alongside a TD50 or TD27, you're pretty likely to be running the lower module as an auxiliary module, not as the main source of all of the sounds. That would basically be turning your TD50 or 27 into a really expensive MIDI controller. And I know some people are happy to do that with a VST, but you're very unlikely to do that with a TD17 or a TD25 or whatever. So yeah, it's cool that you can do it and it is possible, but it's pretty much redundant to most people. I mentioned earlier that I picked and I'm talking about the Kenton USB MIDI host over other options, and that's not because they've sponsored me or anything, although if they fancy it, give me a shout. I bought this entirely out of my own pocket because I knew that I would be able to use it for this purpose, but I did actually buy this only after I'd already bought the MIDI-Tech USB MIDI host. The MIDI-Tech one was cheaper, so I went with that one first, but it turns out it lags quite a lot. Every sort of minute or two, it would miss a few notes, and then all of a sudden they'd all play together. This was obviously a complete nightmare for trying to play drums, and I'm sure that it wouldn't be useful on any instrument at all. So I would really recommend avoiding that particular model if you did want to do something like this. It seems that this wasn't just an isolated case where I got a bad unit, other people have also reported this in reviews that I found after I sent it back. There are a couple of other brands that do make cheaper versions of these too, but I haven't tried those ones, and I couldn't find many of them that also had a MIDI in and a MIDI out socket on them. Those particular models would only be useful for trying to create a MIDI out port on something that only has USB MIDI. So for this particular scenario, those models wouldn't work. And another downside is that unfortunately this isn't a particularly cheap option either. It was £88 for me in the UK, and from having a quick browse around, it seems that it's about the equivalent of that in other territories too. There are also other options for achieving the use cases that I've mentioned in this video. Buying a different module that does have a MIDI import is probably the most obvious. Some of the older Roland lines do have a MIDI import even on the lower end of the spectrum. And then you also do have modules like the Two Box Drum It 3 which comes in around the same kind of price as a TD-17 once you've added the Kenton USB MIDI host to the price. So it's really going to be up to you personally whether this would be worth it to you. It's not the most expensive add-on to buy if you already own one of the modules, but it's not necessarily the best value proposition if you were going in from not having either. But that is ultimately how you can create a MIDI import on your Roland TD-17, 25, 15 or 11 if you want one. So what do you think of this option? Does it sound useful to you, or would you rather pick up a different module to serve that purpose? I'm sure many of you would be pointing to a bunch of different modules that you could use as a mini kit for example, but I do like to share ideas and options so I thought it was worth making a video about it. And do you use any MIDI functionality on your module at all, and if so, how do you use it? If this video was interesting or useful to you at all, consider popping a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like these up on the screen, and check out my store over at theedrumworkshop.com if you want any sound expansions or samples for your module. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!